Welcome to Module 3 of our course in Financial Accounting. This, I think you'll find to be a more challenging module than our first two. This is a module on adjusting journal entries. So it takes what we learned about journal entries, but it does crank it up a notch. It adds a little bit of math, a few calculations to our journal entries. Not too much harder, but I think it is a notch harder. So if you haven't understood journal entries well, I do recommend going back and just doing all of those problems from module two, really getting your practice in. You want to be comfortable with the idea of debits and credits before jumping into these slightly more complicated versions of journal entries. So what is an adjusting journal entry? Why are we here? What is this challenge all about? Uh, I'm going to explain this with an example. So let's say our company buys a car. So we can see this journal entry right here. On October 1st, our company has bought a car for cash, $25,000. So we have this car, right? And if I were to look at a balance sheet, if I were this company's accountant and I prepared a balance sheet on October 1st, right? On October 1st, I make a balance sheet. And of course, on a balance sheet, we're going to list our assets on the left, and we've got a big long list of assets, and somewhere in that list of assets under our long-term assets or property, patent, equipment, I'm going to show a car worth $25,000, and that's my October 1 balance sheet. Um, let's say same company, and a few more months go by, and I keep driving my car, and uh, it's my financial year end. It's December 31st and I go ahead and try to prepare a balance sheet on December 31st and again I list my assets. I've got a big long list and somewhere on that list is a car. Is my car still worth $25,000 on December 31st? I hope your answer to that question was no, probably not, right? because it's not a new car anymore, it's a used car, we've been driving it around for a few months, this car is not worth $25,000. It has deteriorated in value. It has lost some value. And the word an accountant would use is it has depreciated in value, right? It has lost some of its economic value. So the accountant now has a job. They're going to make a balance sheet, but they've got to say, hey, our car's not worth $25,000. It has reduced in value. Now, an important thing about this December 31st date is it's an arbitrary date, right? It's our company's fiscal year, and it could be January 31st or May 31st. It doesn't matter the date, but it's, it's this arbitrarily chosen date. The car dealer is not calling me and saying, just so you know, our car lost value. Our car is not calling us saying this. Nobody's calling us saying this. The accountant has to sort of institute this journal entry. And that's what's different from our journal entries in module two. In module two, we there was a transaction, right? There's an invoice happening. Money is changing hands in many of those transactions. There are outside factors telling the accountant, oh, you need to do a journal entry. With this car depreciation, the only one telling the accountant to do this is the accountant themselves. So the accountant does the journal entry to say, oh, this car's value of $25,000, that doesn't seem right to me. It's, you know, now it's December 31st. The, the car can't be worth $25,000. So the accountant themselves has to sort of start the transaction. So in this module, we're going to learn five types of adjustments. We're going to learn adjustments for prepaid uh, expenses. I call them prepaid assets. Uh, we're going to learn adjustments for depreciation. And that's what we're talking about here. We're going to have to track the wear and tear on our assets like our cars or buildings, things like this. We're going to learn something called accrued revenues, accrued expenses, and finally unearned revenues. I think rather than me describing each, the best way to learn this is by doing examples. And a terrific example where I'm going to take my time introducing each one is problem 3-1-A from our accounting workbook. So That'll be the next video. I'm going to work my way through slowly and steadily problem 3-1-A. And by the end of it, you should have a good understanding of all five of those types of adjustments. That's all for this video. This is going to be a good, challenging module, and I can't wait to get started. See you in the next video.